All right, welcome back y'all. In this video, we are gonna be talking about GitHub Actions. Now, GitHub Actions allows us to manage something called workflows, and a workflow is pretty much just an automated task. And these workflows, they can be triggered whenever certain events happen to our repo. And they can pretty much be anything that we want, but they often include things like building our app, testing it, uh, deploying our code, and in this series, or I don't know if it's going to be in this video or I'm going to break it up into two videos, but we're going to be setting up two separate workflows. The first one that we're going to be setting up in this video is we will say that whenever we submit a PR, we want to automatically check for linting issues and also run those automated tests. Now, probably in the next video, we're going to be setting up another workflow. And for this, what we're going to say is that whenever a PR is merged into master, then we want to automatically deploy that code to our server. So pretty much just a way that we can automate a bunch of like repetitive tasks for our code. Now, with that said, sounds pretty cool, but how do we create those? So workflows are going to be stored and you have to actually name it this. It's a very specific naming convention. But if you go ahead and create a new directory in your repo and name it dot GitHub, now within this directory, you need to create a new subdirectory and name it workflows. So all of your workflows are gonna be in here and you can name them whatever you want, but they have to be a YAML file. So the first one that we're gonna be creating, like I said, is that whenever someone submits a PR, we wanna check for linting issues and run our tests as well. So because it's gonna be triggered on a PR submission, I'm just gonna name this PR dot yml pr dot yaml and actually i want to create a new branch for this i'll say uh um actions testing something like that well i'll just say workflows all right beautiful now in this file the first thing that i'm going to do is just give a name to my workflow now as we're setting up this workflow you're going to see that quite a few different things you can assign a name and all this name is really doing is just a human friendly name because whenever we take a look at these workflows later on, on the GitHub UI, then this name appears in a couple different places. But either way, for now, for the name, just give it a human friendly name and I'm just gonna name it Quality Assurance since this is basically what it's gonna do. Now after this, I'm gonna add this keyword on right here. So this is pretty much telling when do we want to trigger this workflow? Now, remember I said that whenever we make a pull request, that's when we wanna run this workflow right here. However, this other one, workflow call, this one isn't as intuitive. What this means is that we also wanna be able to trigger this from other workflows. And actually, you know how I said that this is mostly for QA, linting our code and running tests. We also said that we're gonna be setting up another workflow in the future to run our CI CD, in other words, deploy our code um, in an automated fashion. Now in that other workflow, before we deploy our code, we actually wanna run this again, just to double check that our code is linted properly and our tests are passing, so on and so forth. But we'll see that later on, just wanna point out what this keyword is right here. Now, this workflow, um, kinda to talk you through a high level what we're gonna do in just a second, this workflow is gonna consist of one job. Now all workflows consist of one or more job, but this one's gonna be simple. It's only gonna consist of one. Now in that job, it's gonna contain a series of steps, or in other words, like instructions on what we want it to do. But I just wanna point that out because I am gonna include the jobs keyword right here and all of our jobs are gonna go right inside here. Now, like I said, we're only gonna have one job and I'm just gonna call it quality assurance. So this is the only job that we're gonna have in this workflow. And just like we named our entire workflow, we can also give a name to this specific job. And that human friendly name, I'll just name it quality assurance because uh, yeah, it's usually just what this is. Um, yeah, but you can name it whatever you want. So what we're gonna be doing in this job is we are gonna be spinning up a container to run our app. And then once our app is running, that's when we can run the make lint and make test commands. 
Now, because whenever we run a container, of course, we need to run it on some kind of um, operating system. We are going to tag it with um, this directive right here. And this determines the machine. And it's almost the equivalent of like the EC2 instance that we're going to run on. So just the latest version of Ubuntu. And I'm choosing this because in production, we are running everything in Ubuntu. So we want to keep everything consistent. So now that we have our base image, what we can do now is specify what container we want to run our app in or this job in. And because if you check out in the Docker file, you see that in production, we're running everything on 3.10.4 bust the rhyme. That's why I'm going with the same container. So this job is indeed also going to run in a Docker container, just the same one as production. Now that is looking good so far. However, before we get to actually running our app and running tests on and so forth, what we need to do is we need to set up one service, which is our database. So just like in this Docker compose file, it's actually going to work pretty similar to this where we're going to run our app in one container. We also need to create another container for our database service. And how do we do that? Well, it's actually going to look very similar to this right here. What we do is we create a services keyword. Now inside here, of course, these are the pretty much um, background services that our job is going to need. And all we need to do for this is just create a simple database from this same image. It's going to be Postgres and all of these environment variables are going to be the same as well. And by the way, one other thing that I want to mention, just uh, want to make sure you don't overlook it in your Docker compose file when setting environment variables, you call it environment. However, in this uh, GitHub workflow, you just say ENV. So, you know, it's something that people commonly overlook. So, uh, you know, just pointing it out. So now that we have our database running, what we can do here is fill out the last section, which is the steps to actually run our app and run the linting and test command. So in this section called steps, the very first thing that we need to do since we're pretty much starting with an empty container right now, what we need to do is actually check out our code. Now, this part is, it always felt not that intuitive to me because I always looked at it like this workflow is running in our repo, but still what we have to do is we need to use um, this directive to actually check out our code or our repo. So this uses command, what this specifies is an action that this workflow should execute. And this is just a built-in um, GitHub action to check out your code. Now, after this, what we need to do after we checked out our code is we need to install poetry. So how do we do that? Well, we do it with this command right here. So it's gonna use this action, which is just um, an action that was created by this person to install poetry. I'm just gonna name it install poetry. Now, because we need to give it some extra information, we are going to use this with keyword right here. Now, whenever we use with in conjunction with action, it just allows us to specify extra parameters that we need. And of course, for this, since we're using poetry, we need to specify which version we want to install. So now we have our container set up and we checked out our code. We installed poetry from here. Now that we have poetry installed, we can just install our dependencies. So how do we do that? Well, pretty easy. Just give this name install dependencies. And under here, we're gonna use this keyword run, and you can probably figure out what this does. It just runs a simple command. And again, this is just installing our dependencies and all of these uh, pre-commit tools to pretty much give us the ability to lint and test, pretty much install everything that we need for um, the same as our local environment. So now that we have everything installed, we can get to the good stuff, which is actually linting and testing our code. So for linting, we can just go ahead and name this step lint and the command again, it's just our make command, which is make lint. And for testing, it's going to look pretty similar. However, check it out. So for this command, of course, it's make test. We're just going to name this step in the process test. However, remember, that by default, our project is set up to, let me see, project settings, base, check it out. 
So the database that we're using by default with no custom configuration is cooking core. However, just like we did in our Docker compose file, we want to overwrite the setting to point to this database that we're using right here. Now, whenever we are using it in GitHub Actions, of course, we aren't using this one, but it's pretty much the same thing where we want to use this background service or this database that we just spun up. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty similar to how we did it in the Docker Compose file. And that is we are going to include an environment variable. Remember, unlike Docker Compose, where it says environment, because this is a workflow, we just use ENV. And then we just set an environment variable just like before. Now, the very last thing that we need to do is set our local settings path, which is pretty much just the uh, settings for whatever local environment that you're in. Now, remember that on our development environment, whenever we were setting this up, we manually created this local directory. And also in the production environment, we created that local directory as well. However, in this um, GitHub workflow, all it's doing is it's checking out our code and our repo by default, it doesn't have this local directory. And what we could do is figure out a way to create one in this environment and like copy our files over. However, I'm gonna show you um, just a much easier way to do that and that is this. In your cooking core, uh, wherever all those templates are, which are in project settings templates, go ahead and create a new one. And I'm just gonna call it settings.github.py. Now in here, I'm just gonna paste in the settings that we need. Now, instead of taking this and copying it over to like a local directory right here, what I'm gonna do is I am going to set the environment variable just to point to this right here. So I don't have to create any directories, copy it over, so on and so forth. All we're saying is that for this local settings path, just use the template file right like that. And with that said, this workflow should be set up good to go. So as long as I didn't mess anything up, I'm going to go ahead and push this up. Let me see. Go ahead and commit that. Let me show you everything so it can see in, okay, uh, workflow. Now let me just go ahead and push this up to GitHub. And now, hopefully in a second, there we go. All right, so there is our branch and I'm gonna create a pull request. And whenever I do, this looks good. So remember, because we had this directive right here where on pull request, it's gonna trigger this workflow. It should go ahead and kick this off, which we see right here. And you can also click this tab right here, actions, and that's gonna show you the workflows and the status of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click into this and you can see that the quality assurance workflow is indeed running. And if you want more details, you can just click into this and it gives you um, like a detailed view of each step. So right here, it's just initializing those containers. That container right here, uh, where was it? Bust the rhyme. And then, all right, so doing that and after this, it is checking, our, checking out our code right now, installing Poetry, so everything looks so far so good. Now using Poetry to install those dependencies, no issues so far. And now that everything is installed, it's just gonna run those commands to first check for linting issues. And I actually am not even sure if we do have linting issues. Probably should have checked this beforehand, but either way, I guess it's fine to uh, check right now. All right, that one passed, that one passed. Past and past, beautiful. So no linting issues. And the last thing that's gonna do is just run our test. And okay, I didn't see any output, but where is it? All right, so check next to this, mean our test passed as well. And now you can see this overall green check mark. And if we go back to our pull request, we see we get a little check success right here and a little indication all checks have passed. And if you want more details to see which ones they are, that was this workflow right there. So now that our workflow is working properly and our code is verified as good, 
we can go ahead and squash and merge this bad boy in. And yeah, delete the branch. All right, so nice. We got one workflow taken care of. And what I will do is in the next video, I'll create another workflow. And that workflow is gonna be responsible for deploying our code to our server. It's gonna be fun, gonna be amazing. And yeah, I'll see you then.